Hey folks, in today's video, I'm going to do an overview of the electrical system here on my Smitty Built Scout trailer. Now, if you didn't catch the original build and tour video that I published last summer, I'll put a card up above. Definitely check that one out first because that'll make more sense. Today, I'm really just gonna focus on the electrical system. And secondly, I just wanna thank you for your patience. I realized I put that video out, you know, probably over six months ago at least. And, uh, you know, I try to work these videos and when I have the time, I'm actually planning on doing a kind of a little mini series going back here to the, the Scout trailer. And so I'll be putting out several videos on the different uh, components like the awning here and the tent, different reviews and such. And so if you're interested in that kind of content, definitely make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to make sure that you're notified. Okay, so like I said, today's video is going to focus on just the electrical system here on my Scout trailer. And I wanna say up front, this is not a how-to video. I'm just sharing how I did the electrical system on my trailer here. I'm not an electrician. And so again, I'm just showing you how I did it. So definitely do your research before copying or duplicating anything that you're about to see in this video here. And make sure you've got the right sized wires, the right safety protocols in place. But that being said, I do have some goals that I made notes of here on my electrical system because you know my goals might be different than your goals. So, First goal that I had in mind was I wanted to be budget friendly. You know, I didn't just want to spend money like it was growing on a tree and just put some, you know, state of the art, top of the line electrical system here on the trailer. I wanted to be budget friendly. And secondly, I wanted something that was versatile. You know, something that's always bugged me about lithium battery installs on trailers or even RVs like I've got back there. A lot of times you'll see folks put these, you know, state of the art systems in where there's just thousands and thousands of dollars worth of lithium batteries and inverters and all the other equipment that goes along with it and all that equipment is permanently attached to the the trailer or the the rv and i think that's great if you're living in an rv full-time and you're using it frequently but for someone like myself that's only using the trailer on the weekends here and there for me to spend that kind of money and then permanently put it into the trailer where i can't make use of that money or those you know pieces of equipment in other situations it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And so I began to contemplate, is there a way that I can install an electrical system into this Scout trailer here where I can retain full functionality of it while I'm using the Scout trailer, but then pull out parts of that electrical system when I'm not using the Scout trailer and use that electrical system in a more versatile manner. And I'll talk more about that later in the video, but that was a very important goal. Another goal was to support two to three days worth of off-grid use here, because typically that's how long I'm gonna be taking this trailer out off the grid. And then I wanted to be able to support both AC and DC needs. So I wanted to be able to plug in 120 volt appliances, devices, and then also of course the 12 volt devices that are on the trailer. And then last, I wanted something that was, you know, simple that was mostly plug and play and not too complicated. Okay, so those are my goals. Your goals might be different, but let me show you where everything starts right in this compartment here. I think Smitty Build actually considers this more of a generator compartment. They have a little label down here talking about not using the generator unless the, the drawer is pulled out, but it's really perfect for an off the grid battery system. And basically everything revolves around this guy right here let me pull this out just a little bit so i can get you a better view of it but basically going back to my goals about having a system that was versatile where i could utilize the components both with the trailer and without the trailer that was a very important goal to me if i'm going to spend money i want to be able to make use of some of those items when i'm not using the trailer and so that's where i got the idea to use a portable power bank i mean you've seen these before there's tons of them on the market, all kinds of different brands. You know, there's some some mainstream players in the U.S. that have uh, you know U.S. marketing teams and whatnot. And then there's a ton of just you know kind of off-brand companies that are making these and, and selling them for various different price points. But I settled on this guy right here. This is from Blue Eddy, and you know I wanted something that was safe and reliable that had good reviews because when you're dealing with lithium battery banks, you know. Some companies, I just don't know how much testing they do on their, their lithium cells and how safe they are. And so I wanted something from a, a reputable company. And Blue Eddy seems to have a more US-based marketing team and they're carried by some, some pretty uh, big you know, box uh, retailers. So I set it on this unit, this brand for that reason, but then this unit specifically, because it has some features that not all the other power banks have. 
And so let me go through some of those to start with. You know, first off, you can see it's about a 2000 watt hour battery bank, okay? And so that will get me about two to three days off the grid factoring in, you know, my refrigerator, all the lights on the unit, and then the AC that I'm pulling right there. But this unit has a couple things, really two things I think that, that stand out among other units. The first is it has a much higher 12 volt output port right here compared to most units. You can see right here, this one has a, a 12 volt DC 30 amp output in this one plug right here. And a lot of the units that I was looking at only had maybe a, a 10 amp, you know, output for the 12 volt, you know, something like this, just a standard uh, cigarette style plug. and for a trailer like this, you know, 10 amps probably would just barely cut it, but I always like to have, you know, a higher overhead, uh, kind of a cushion right there. And so to be able to have a 30 amp plug with a single connection really supports all the 12 volt needs that I could ever want on this Scout trailer. And so that was really important to me. That way I only have one plug to connect and disconnect for the 12 volt use. But then this unit also has the standard USB ports, which are pretty common on these power banks. And then of course it has the AC, the 120 volt AC power plugs. It's got four of those over here. The second feature that's really unique on this Blue Eddy power bank is that over here, all the way on the right side, sorry, not the greatest angle, but you can see here, it actually has a 30 amp 120 volt plug right here. That's a 2200 watt plug right here. Now I'm not gonna make use of this here on the, the Scout trailer, but this is extremely useful having that 30 amp plug, especially if you have a, an RV that has 30 amp power right here. I can actually plug in my RV that has 30 amp power into this power bank if I wanted to and, and run it off of there. So it's just very versatile. That's something that a lot of power banks this size, this capacity don't have. The 30 amp plug right there and then a very high powered 12 volt DC uh, output like this one here. And then going back to my goal to have something that was versatile, I can use this Blue Eddy power bank here with my Scout trailer. I've got full functionality to the, the outlets and all the 12 volt system, and I'll show you that next. But then let's say during the week when I'm not using the Scout trailer, maybe I have a, a power outage at the house. Well, I can bring this into the house, you know, power whatever I need, refrigerators, laptops, that sort of thing. If I'm going on a, a day trip somewhere, I can take this and put it in the, the back of the truck and power a cooler or whatever I need independently. And so this is very versatile. It's something that I can make use of. And for me, if I'm gonna spend money on something like this that's expensive, then I wanna be able to make full, full use of it even when I'm not using the, the Scout trailer. And so that's where I came up with the idea to use one of these portable power banks. And uh, I forgot to mention, it does have wireless charging on top. So you can just drop your phone on there if you wanna charge it up. That's kind of a bonus there. But uh, this is basically the component that I can remove if I choose to and use it when the, the trailer is not in use. I did not want to have to run a bunch of wires, you know, when I get to my campsite and set up. I like to be in and out with my setup. And so all the wires that you're seeing here, those are gonna be permanently mounted to the, the trailer. And so that's what I wanna show you next. Basically, this is what I remove. I plug all these wires in that you see on the front, and then everything else is fed permanently to different parts of the trailer. So first up, we've got that 30 amp 12 volt plug right here. And that basically means I can get all my 12 volt needs in the trailer right through this single connection right here. So everything from my 12 volt refrigerator to the lights, to a, a fan that I run off the grid to whatever else that you wanna plug in that's 12 volt. All of that is fed through this plug right here and it runs to a distribution panel that I'll show you next. And then of course, we've got some USB ports to charge devices up. Those are permanently run in the tent. I'll show you that later as well. And then same deal on these 120 volt AC plugs. You know, I didn't wanna have extension cords running from here to different devices when I get to my campsite. And so these are permanently run to outlets that are mounted throughout the trailer and up in the, the tent there. So let me just go through all these connections first and show you how they, they work. This 12 volt is really the most important one. And so this connection right here runs into this bay right here. So right back here, this is that same cord running to the power bank. And this feeds my distribution panel right here, or fuse block, you know, think of it basically like a, like a circuit breaker, just without the circuits. Instead, it's got fuses right there, 12 volt fuses. So basically 12 volt power goes into the distribution panel 
And then I've got individual channels with different appliances attached. So you can see I've got lighting, you know, all my 12 volt lighting. I've got a refrigerator, an auxiliary 12 volt port, and then a fan that I use up in the tent. And what I like about this is this is what really makes the system safe because then you can put different fuses here that are rated based on the appliances that you're planning on using. And you gotta be extra careful to make sure that you use the right thickness, the right gauge wire, you know, both feeding this distribution block and then coming out of it. I always like to go oversize. So definitely do your research to make sure that you use the right wire there. And same with the fuses too. You know, one tip I'll just mention is that when you're buying fuses to put in this distribution block, I would recommend buying name brand fuses. There's gonna to be tons of fuses, especially on Amazon from you know, companies overseas. And my concern would be, I just don't know how accurately they test those fuses to make sure that they, they blow at the right amperage. So make sure you get good quality fuses. But basically that 12 volt power goes into here and then it distributes to all the different 12 volt devices that I, that I have on the trailer. So first, let me show you what I have as far as lighting, and then we'll go through the, the 12 volt uh, ports that I've got. So you can see I've got a real basic switch panel right here, and that's gonna control all the lighting throughout the trailer. The lighting is permanently mounted. I've got some strip lighting, kind of amber strip lighting here, and all the different storage bays. And I'll put a link, by the way, to all this stuff down below if you're interested. But basically, these are just short LED strip lights. They're mounted with some magnetic mounts that are really nifty, you know, because the whole trailer is made out of steel. I really didn't want to put holes and bolts and, you know, things protruding through it. So these little magnetic mounts work really nice. They're not the cheapest, but then you can mount things, whether it's these LED lights or even just cables, you know, keeping them organized and tidied. So I, I think I used, oh, maybe 30 or 40 of those guys throughout this trailer. But that way I've got lights in all the different compartments. And then these other switches are for the different lights out here. These are kind of two-way lights from Dream Lighting. And this one right here is gonna be on our passenger side. So you can see I can go white. This is super bright at night. I mean, it just lights everything up like a stadium around. Or if I'm concerned about bugs, I can go to the amber, which is a little bit uh, dimmer. It doesn't pull as much uh, wattage either in terms of leaving it on overnight. So. I just did a real simple switch bank right here. This is kind of like a hobby box right here that I mounted everything in. You know, I could have done a flush mount and mounted it to the actual wall inside here and had the switches, you know, pushed back and kind of recessed into the wall. But again, I didn't want to, you know, uh, spend too much time on this and have so many holes in the steel panel right there. Plus there would be kind of wires in that back compartment just kind of hanging out there. So I kind of built mine out with this little hobby box and you can see it does stick out, oh, maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter here, but it, uh, it's not in the way and it just makes it easy to keep all the wires hidden and concealed. I also went with a very economical uh, a switch panel right here. I mean, you could get real high-end rocker switches, custom labels if you wanted, but I just wanted something that was inexpensive and functional with the two-way lights that I had. And so I was able to get all these switches right here for a great price. And then the bottom one, of course, is just a, a single way. And then I just put, you know, my own homemade labels on them so I can tell what's going on there. So out of here, basically, out of this switch box runs wires to these individual lights. And again, all that's permanently mounted to the trailer. And I'll show you what one of those lights looks like and the wires feeding them. But yeah, it's all nice and tidied and nice and neat in there. Let me show you some of the other circuits right here. So I've got a rear refrigerator 12 volt, a rear auxiliary, and then a 12 volt tent fan. So out of this distribution panel right here are more wires, 12 volt wires running to those locations. From the rear of the trailer, I'll just show you what those connections look like inside this back storage compartment. You can see all the way against that back wall, basically the distribution panel is right on the other side here. I've got another hobby box and then I've got two 12 volt outlets on there. So one for the refrigerator and then an aux port for whatever else I wanna plug in. And then down below there, that's gonna be a 120 volt outlet, kind of a waterproof style cover right there. And so again, all this is permanent, you know, looks real neat and tidy, all the wires and, and loom. And I use those magnet connectors to, uh, to secure them to the, the steel there and just, you know, keep everything looking real nice and neat and tidy. And then you can see more of those wires running to the different lights here. Again, strip lighting right here. 
with those magnetic mounts to hold it on. And here's a close up of that LED strip light and it's just secured with those magnetic mounts with some tie wraps. You can see different size loom to conceal all the wires. And again, just using those magnetic mounts with tie wraps to secure them to the, the metal wall there. And uh, yeah, it just looks really neat when everything's concealed like that. I left some slack here for the one running to the door. And I'll show you what the connections look like that uh, feed those lights there. You can see I'm using these Wago lever nuts. I'm a big fan of these. I actually was introduced to these on a, a previous RV uh, from Jayco years ago. And I really like these a lot because they're really clean. They're simple. You basically just flip up one of these levers and slide your wires in. You can get them in, you know, two, three, four, even five bank lever nuts. And so basically that's what I'm using to join the, the 12 volt wiring to all the, the lights there. And then you can do things like, you know, have a nice grommet when you make penetrations through the metals so that the wires, you know, don't get, uh, you know, roughed up by the, the metal there and just, you know, make everything look real nice and, and clean with these magnetic mounts there. And I'll give you some more close up views inside the rear storage compartment here on the driver's side to kind of get an idea of how everything's run. And then next I'll show you the wires running up to the tent. If you look here and see that center bundle of wires that's running up to the, the roof here of the, the trailer, that is actually feeding the, the tent. You know, I'm a big fan of when I get to my campsite, I like everything to be real quick and easy to set up. And so I wanted to have that 12 volt power, that 120 volt power, here up in my tent, but I didn't want to have to have wires every time running from the power bank, you know, not just for uh, visual reasons, but just for, for time reasons. And so what I did is actually ran permanently a piece of conduit. This is kind of flexible watertight conduit and actually punctured a hole in the top there. It's all watertight and then fed all the wires, the 12 volt wires, the 120 volt wires through that flexible conduit and then went up into the tent and that way i've got permanent 12 volt power and 120 volt power coming from the power station here's a close-up of what that conduit looks like we're kind of right in the middle of pollen season here and had a nice rain today so everything's kind of dusty and and dirty but basically it's just watertight conduit and you can see that connection here it does have an o-ring under there but i went ahead and sealed it with some sealant as well just to make sure but it's flexible and so it just follows this cross member right here and I've just got real beefy tie wraps holding it there to the other side going up to the tent. You know, I could have gone straight up into the tent here, but this is the entry side of the tent where it unfolds. And so it would have been kind of right in the middle of the, the bed, whereas running it to that side, it's on the perimeter then and kind of out of the way. And then it just runs up into the tent here with a little elbow and all these connections are just standard for watertight conduit. It's got an o-ring on this side but i did go ahead and seal it up as well just to be safe it was a little nerve-wracking you know drilling this hole into the bottom of the the tent but you know you just measure several times and make sure that you you get it there and drill a pilot hole and everything uh, but it worked out fine and that way i've got permanent you know 12 volt power for charging phone for running a fan for lights in the tent and then 120 volt power i mean if i want to plug in a laptop or another appliance up there a light appliance that outlet is already up in the tent. And so I'm never having to set that up when I get to my campsite. And again, all that 120 volt power is coming off of this power bank right here with these plugs. You can see I've got one labeled here, tent. And so this is feeding a power strip that's up in the tent permanently. And then I've got another one to the rear outlet that I showed you in the storage and another one feeding an outlet there on the opposite side of this wall, kind of in that kitchen compartment there that you know I could plug a coffee maker into or, or something else. I'll give you a closer look at one of those 120 volt outlets here in the kitchen compartment. You can see back there and it's just got a little waterproof cover on it. And then there's your standard 120 volt outlet. You know, there's no water that's gonna get back in here, but I figured, you know, with humidity and moisture, might as well just have a, a nice waterproof style outlet in all the different spaces and then you know another sample of just going through the steel walls with a grommet and using that nice loom to make everything look real nice and neat and then just another example of a, a strip lighting there and those wago connectors so everything just looks real nice neat and tidy i'm not having to run cables to all the lighting and yet it's all powered off of that that uh, power bank there speaking of which 
these lights here, I've had a lot of questions about these lights from Dream Lighting, and I will put links again to everything down in the description below. These, when I bought them, were not available on Amazon at the time. Dream Lighting is a kind of a big uh, distributor supplier in the RV world for 12 volt lighting, and they have a ton of products on Amazon, but they didn't have these at the time, these two-way strips that have the amber and the white, but it's my understanding they have added these on Amazon now, and so they're a lot easier to, to buy. But these lights are perfect for a, a scout trailer like this. They've got a really nice appearance. And of course, having the amber and the, the white, they just look really sharp and they're really low draw on the amber side. I mean, I can leave, I've got uh, five of them all the way around the unit. I can leave all five on all night long and it's extremely low amp draw. It might you know, take the battery down 10 to 15% if even. Okay, so I think I've showed you just about all the outputs for the electrical system coming out of the, the power bank and then feeding the 12 volt system and the 120 volt. But what about the inputs here on the power bank itself as far as recharging it? And so in the spirit of keeping everything simple and yet again having some integration with uh, the trailer, what I did, as you can see here on the side, this is where the input that comes with the power bank connects to. And it's basically just a standard high powered AC adapter that converts the AC power to DC. And it's actually uh, pretty high DC. It's uh, 58 volts, approximately eight amps. And so that's what's feeding the power station to recharge it. So instead of me having to, you know, plug that AC adapter in and then have an ugly cord, you know, hanging out of the, the compartment here, what I did is instead used another one of those waterproof AC outlets here, but a, a mail plug. And I'll show you that here in just a second. And this is basically feeding that mail plug on the outside. And you can see right back there, it's just an extension cord that then receives the AC adapter that in turn feeds and recharges the, the power bank. So let me show you what I'm talking about out here. So here's that waterproof outlet. This is a male plug this time. And so then I can take an extension cord, just like this one here, I can plug it in right here. This would be of course connected to your shore power your house, or maybe you're at a campsite that has shore power. Then you plug this in very similar to, uh, you know, how you would do on an RV like this guy here, where it's got a shore power cord feeding it. And so that's all this is right here, but this way it's waterproof. You know, it looks neat. You can pull up to a campsite if you want it or your house and plug in there and, and have the, the power bank charging. And in that case, this is basically acting like, uh, you know, just a converter, essentially converting that 120 volt AC power to the, the 12 volt panel right there. So it's a pretty slick setup. I mean, if I didn't have this power bank right here, I would have had to buy a lithium battery bank, you know, one or two batteries, then have an inverter plus another converter charger that would, you know, charge the, the lithium battery bank and convert it to uh, the 12 volt power when it's plugged into shore power. So those are a lot of different components that I would have spent money on that would be permanently, you know, mounted and stuck here in the trailer. And because I'm only using this on the weekends, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to spend all that money and then have something that's permanently associated with the trailer. So that's really what settled me on doing this power bank setup. It's worked flawlessly for me uh, since I installed this, you know, last summer and have used it several times. And, and typically I can get, you know, two to three days and then have a little bit of surplus of off grid use. I say two to three because in the summertime, I'm using a, a fan for circulation in the tent and that fan uses a little bit more power. So probably two nights, two days or so in the summertime, maybe three, possibly even four in the wintertime if I'm not using as much power there. Okay guys, I think that's just about everything as far as an overview of the electrical system here on my Scout trailer. Build, hopefully you got your questions answered and the information that you're looking for. If not, definitely drop me a question below and I'll do my best to answer them. I will include links to all the different uh, components that I used here in my electrical system. Everything from the distribution panel to the wires, the loom, the, the switch panel here, all the different receptacles and outlets, LED lights, all that good stuff. I'll include links to everything down below. So I appreciate you using those affiliate links to help support the channel. And like I said earlier in the video, I do plan to circle back now and do some more videos here on the Scout trailer, some of the individual components like the rooftop tent, the awning, and perhaps some of the other items, and then probably conclude with uh, a review on the Scout trailer itself and answer the question, you know, would I 
buy it all over again. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and you got that notification bell turned on. As always, thanks for watching.